All right, guys, welcome to Wide Awake News Radio. I am Charlie McGrath, along with Eric Lovely, on this uh, 18th day of December, uh, Tuesday, 2012. Kicking off uh, the two-hour program tonight, uh, Eric and I are going to, uh, uh, well, I told him before the program. First of all, Eric, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Hello? Okay. Uh, I was talking to Eric before the program, and I told him uh, that, you know, there's there's certainly occasions, and I've learned this over uh, the years, where, uh, uh, okay, yeah, I don't know, I don't know if, if you guys are hearing me well or not. I'm getting messages uh, from the room saying that, uh, or from Eric, that it sounds uh, a bit rough. Gary, can you hear me? Yeah, Charlie, your audio is fine. I may have problems with Eric. Okay. All right. Well, <clears throat> I was talking to Eric, and, and I let him know that you know tonight, I believe it will certainly be one of those nights where. I need to just get out of uh, Eric's way uh, because I know, uh, you, uh, yeah, Rince. So, G Eric, it's it's your it's your deal. I don't know if we need to call you back. Uh, uh, Brett says it's good there at the studio, and Gary says it's good. So, um, but when you do when we do get you on here, I certainly uh, want you to give me your opinions uh, of what's uh, happened over the last several days. And Eric, I think you're with me now, right? Oh yes, I, I, I'm here, Charlie. I'm here. Okay. Well, let, let me make this announcement real quick before we, we get into this. Uh, uh, guys, if you're listening on either Rinse Radio Network or Oracle Broadcasting and you want to join the folks in chat, we have about uh, 45 folks in there right now. If you want to join them, go to wideawakenews.com, click on the uh, microphone in the right-hand corner, and you can uh, join the guys in chat. Uh, if you want to watch us do this live on Justin TV, you can see a picture of Eric Lovely with his biggest fan right behind him and uh, me doing this live. Uh, so you can uh, access that from the, the chat room as well. Uh, coming up in hour number two, Woody O'Brien is uh, uh, is going to be joining me for the second hour. I, I'm going to talk quite a bit in the second hour, maybe in the first hour, with Eric, about uh, H, uh, HSBC and uh, their their actions that were beyond belief. Right? I mean, the, the, this institution laundered money for the people that we've been told we need to be terrified of uh, over the last 10 years. The drug dealers, the terrorists, HSBC, a too big to fail institution, laundered who knows how many billions of dollars, and they, they cannot be put in jail. They cannot be shut down, and the reasons given is because they're too big to fail, they're too big to jail, and we'll, we'll break that story down. May, Eric, if you want to talk about that, you're more than welcome to, because I'm sure you're up on that as well. But what I want you to talk about uh, is what you and I talked about on Sunday. We, and I let folks know last night on the program that you and I were texting back and forth uh, during the uh, president's speech. And, and, I was, and I remember texting you something about he's going for it. He's going for broke. Uh, when, when that speech uh, from Connecticut uh, started out as somber and sorrowful and uh, his condolences to the crowd, and then it migrated to, we, the people, are not taking care of our children. That's when the hair in the back of my neck stood up, and I thought, oh my God, here we go. We're going to see a full court press uh, to demonize guns, to demonize people that uh, own guns, to demonize people that think guns uh, are anything uh, other. If they think guns are supposed to be for the people, only for hunting tradition, these people are going to be demonized. It's going to be a full court press uh, to uh, give the tyrannical government uh, more room to operate in a gun-free uh, society. And it's terrifying to me, Eric, that there's over 48 percent of the people of this country who are willing just to bend over and, uh, you know, take it. You know, bend over and say, yeah, you bet. Whatever you want to do, go ahead and do it. Eric Lovely. Well, you know, I'm going to say something that's going to surprise you. And then I'm going to say a whole lot of things that's probably going to disgust some people. It's probably going to make you kind of irritated, pissed off, whatever other kind of adjective you want to use to express how you're going to feel. However, it's time to take your gloves off. It's time to talk about reality. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the very first step is, is I'm the very first thing I'm going to tell you is I'm going to, I'm going to surprise you. The, Mr. Barack Hussein Obama is correct. You aren't taking care of your children. You see, here's the breakdown, and we're going to get into a specific gentleman and what he said, but here's the basic breakdown. You elected to take, and, and I'm going to talk right to the, to, the, to, the, to the parents of the children that were both lost, that weren't lost, and to the parents who are listening from other schools. 
You took your child. You expected and assumed complete safety. You turned it over to an unarmed individual that has absolutely zero ability to protect the life of your child. It's your fault. I, I, this is this is really it, it's going to break a lot of people's hearts. But you know what? It wouldn't take much to open up a private school, okay, and require all teachers to be not only trained, certified, and educated to the parents' full uh, wishes and condolences for firearms, and have armed individuals teaching your class, okay? Because let me let me explain this to you. Let me break this down in case you haven't figured it out, it, it, Mr. First Parent, whoever the first parent is, and whoever any other parent is. And I'm going to give this to you as graphic and as raw as possible because you have to understand. When the guts of the first child splattered on his, his fellow classmates sitting next to him, where was the police officers? Where were they? Who did they save? The second child goes down. The school teacher's brains is splattered on the wall. Where are the cops? They don't exist. Cops are nothing more than meter maids. They're nothing more than maids, period. They show up and clean up the mess afterwards. So no, I don't want to hear about people telling me about how sad they feel. I don't want to hear people telling me about, yes, it's a tragedy. <laughs> but it's a tragedy that they were put into this position in the first place. Like Demcad's show, with you and Demcad was talking about yesterday, and videos that were put out. You put them in harm's way and expected some other individual 20 minutes away from your child to swoop in and save their life before this. Perhaps maybe you should think about what gun control really means. Perhaps you should use this as a, as a, you know, everybody wants to talk about, oh, this is the, this is the staunch, this is the nail in the coffin. Yeah. <laughs> this is the gun control event of the world. Why isn't it the nail in the coffin for organized police officers? They're ineffective. They're money pits. They're a drain on society. They're useless. They could do nothing to save this child. Let me tell you what. Let me break this down for you, too. Go ahead and take away guns. I guarantee you I can walk into a school, into a classroom, shut the door behind me with a machete, and kill everybody in the room. I don't care who they are. I'll chop everybody up in the room before a cop gets there. I'll kill 10 or 12 of them with a the screwdriver alone before anybody even really knows what's going on. How do you Hyperbole. believe... Hyperbole. I mean, Hyperbole. <laughs> well, yeah, but how do people believe... That a firearm, somehow removing a firearm, well, what about, let's look at the It numbers. has nothing to do with, it has, what it, it has. 65,000 people that were strangled last year. What well, listen, about the 65,000 people that were poisoned last year? <laughs> I yeah, mean, ridiculous. I, I don't think this audience ha has any illusion that it has anything to do with, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the uh, fervor over gun control oh, no. now. No, no, I want them, I want people of the audience to take these tapes, to take the tape of this video and give it to those parents and give it to those police officers because it is high time that whole entire town looks at themselves and says, what is the real problem? The problem is we couldn't protect them. The problem is, is that gun laws didn't protect them. We now need to change course. We need a new direction, but they won't do it. They want to oh, they're in a new direction. All right. They're, oh, oh, there's a new direction coming, Eric. Uh, you can you can bank on that, but it's going to have nothing to do with keeping you, your children, this nation, or uh, or freedom safe, or any anything that, that will benefit the people of this land. Well, that well, direction is you know, coming, but it, you know it isn't going to be a direction that's beneficial to this. They want to round everybody up, you know. They want to round everybody up to right. take guns, you know. They want to take all the guns away and whatnot. Well, how about all of us with our guns? How about we go down to the White House and we round all of them up and hold them accountable for 126 children that died in a country that you never heard about in the last two months because they're collateral damage. They're unimportant. Oh, what? You know, these, these people in Washington, people who should be so angry. What? Brown children don't count. Afghani children, children don't count. Ch children in these foreign lands because they're not Americans. <coughs> I mean, we lose 28 kids, or 28 people, 20 of them children, and the whole country's coming in glued. Over 20 kids. Well, now, let's look at this. You just killed 126 of their kids. Do you think they're ever going to like you? How many decades do you think it's going to take before their population doesn't want to gouge your eyeballs out? All right, we're going to take, we're going to take a break. We're going to be back with Eric Lovely, more Wide Awake News Radio. Just a few minutes, guys. Hang tight. Guys, welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. Charlie McGrath along with Eric Lovely. I just dropped a story uh, into the chat room, and, and I want to get into this a little bit. Um, 
uh, we're we're continuing this conversation uh, on uh, the push for gun control. And and Eric, I I have absolutely no doubt that that this something is going to get done. Something is going to get done that's going to affect uh, the the ability of, uh, of people to go out and even even the, the restrictions that are out there now. You know, and, and people think that that this is a nation that you can just go get whatever you want and, and gun control uh, or gun uh, the ability to buy guns is out of control. Uh, no, it's not. I mean, there's nothing that you there's nothing that you purchase new that you're not going through the government apparatus to begin with. Uh, but if if we think for one second that they're not going to use this crisis event, it's like that video I put out Sunday night. They this is horrific, horrific. I, I can't even imagine. And Eric, I know you, you know you have kids, and I and I can't even imagine. You know, it, it's hard to talk about because, yeah, we have people in this nation who are asleep, but that doesn't mean their kids deserve to be blown away and splattered and eleven shots by some psycho that. Dad happened to be scheduled to testify before the LIBOR, and, and, and it's coincidental that the last mass shooting uh, of this uh, bizarre nature uh, was the exact same uh, kind of background on that individual. Uh, but the, no, that, the no, no, I mean, ahead. come on now. I mean, let's look at it this way. You got this hobo standing on the street corner, right? He's been there for months and months and months. He isn't going anywhere. He takes money. He begs. He does whatever. He feeds himself. That's how he goes about doing his thing. If you take a cheeseburger out and you lay it on the on the, on the, on the, on, the, on the damn sidewalk and you open it up and it's fresh and smelling good and you walk away, don't you think he's going to eat that cheeseburger? Well, it's the same way. If you take the guns out of society, you take all these children and helpless idiots, you put a bunch of Marxists who aren't going to put their life on the line for anybody. Okay, that that's pretty much what your school teachers are because they're either fascists or communists. There is no in between. Okay, that's what your school teachers are. There's key questions you can sit down and ask them. So they're sitting in the back of the room. They're more afraid than the kid because they've been browbeat the entire time they got their college education above what dirt bags they are. And if they're white, they have to be racist and like how they don't have the authority to defend themselves or those children. So what the hell are they doing in that position anyways? And what are you doing sending your children there? You, you offer up a viable target. If you create yourself a p air and state of victimization, guess what, Johnny? You're going to be victimized. That's how it goes. This is the reason why the Second Amendment was included. This is the reason why this is a ridiculous argument. It is the lack thereof, that Second Amendment, applied in your social groups and in your gathering places that has caused the death of these children, okay? And if people don't want to claim, you know, they, they want to claim some nut job. Well, you know what? If the situation wasn't the way it was, how could the government get a nut job and send him out to do something? I mean, how many nut jobs is the patsies are the government going to go through? Well, we had 38 people shot to death on the front lawn of the school today. However, they were all terrorists shot to death by the teachers. What, are they just going to keep sending armies of people? No, it's because there's no guns there. They know it's a gun-free zone. And let's look at Britain. Yeah, okay, so you have a 6 or 7% decline in, or actually 27% decline in firearm killings in the United Kingdom because it did away with firearms. But how about the murder rate? Did the murder rate go down? No. It went up by 42.5%. Strong-arm robberies, muggings, beatings, okay? All of these things went up. Why? Because the people can't defend themselves. A guy with a baseball bat is going to walk down the street. He's going to feel like he's king because there's nobody that isn't, unless you got a baseball bat and that's going to be easy to see. So he's going to go the other direction and beat someone who doesn't have a ball bat. I mean, it's, it's really how this whole entire thing boils down. People just don't get it. It's evil. It's oh, good. But it's evil. And you must be prepared to deal with evil. If you're not, you deserve what you got. You're crying over something that you could have prevented. Yeah, nobody deserves what nobody deserves that. I, I, I mean, I, Eric, I'm not arguing with any of your points. I'm just saying nobody deserves that. Nobody deserves that. The disgusting that. part. The disgusting part is the children. The children don't yeah, deserve yeah. It because they had no choice. Someone chose for them to go to that school. Someone forced them to go to that environment. Someone told them that they were going to be okay. They're innocent little children. They deserve all the sorrow that anyone could 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 shovel onto those children. Yeah. And the parents need to understand why the children are, are, have the sorrow, because they had no choice but to be victims. They were put in that position by the state. They were put in that position by your local 
your, your local friggin' lawmakers. They were put in that position by your preachers. They were put in that position by all of your leaders of your community. You're all sharing guilt. And I'm tired of people saying, no, I want to feel bad for them. I, you know, oh, hey, Mr. Man, I know you got a giant golden statue through your front window that everyone could see, and you left your door unlocked, and someone came in and stabbed you to death and took it from you, but I feel real bad for you. Yeah. I don't even know where you're going with that. <laughs> That's the reality. It's the same thing. You sent your kids to school, a giant golden chalice for a psycho to look at, and you left the front door unlocked with no guard dogs and no nobody. What did you think was going to happen? Eventually, it was bound to happen. I mean, no, come that, on. Yeah, but you you're know, making the, get, get but, naked but and is, walk down the street and expect are, not to be raped by somebody. I, Eric, I, listen, I understand what you're saying, and you know that, that I agree. Uh, I'm uh, uh, oh, I, can, you got me now? Eric? I, I'm not going to. I want to comment on what he said, but I'm not going to do it unless he can respond. Eric, are you with me? Uh, yeah, I'm hearing you again. I didn't hear oh. anything you said before that, though. I just said I'm not going to – I was going to comment on what you said, but I don't want to comment on what you just said uh, without you having the ability to respond uh, back. It, not that I was going to argue with you, but, um, you know, I, but the, the, the argument you're, you're making, is I, I agree with. You know, we, we need to you – know, if, if the Second Amendment wasn't a dirty word in this country, you know ah, – dang it, we got to break. All right, we're going to be back with Eric Lovely, more Wide Awake News Radio in just a few minutes. I want to talk about this a little bit deeper. All right, we'll be right back. I did too. Yeah, welcome back to Wide Awake News Radio. We were having a discussion with Gary and Eric and myself uh, during the break about, you know, the a lot of the things that are floating around the uh, the alternative sphere, uh, including the LIBOR connection, uh, including the uh, Batman movie connection uh, between, uh, you know, not only Aurora, but uh, uh, the shooting in Connecticut as well. And uh, we can get into that, I guess, uh, if... Uh, uh, if you want to, Eric and Gary, um, uh, first of all, I, I, I came on last night and talked about uh, the connection, the, the factual, uh, guaranteed factual connection that I've seen at least 50 sources on. Uh, OK, I'm exaggerating, but at least uh, let me try to think, at least a dozen sources on that uh, uh, the shooter in Aurora's father uh, was 100 percent scheduled to uh, testify uh, on the LIBOR scandal. Uh, Gary, I agree with you, when, but when I did that video, I purposely uh, used the the uh, the uh, phrase, uh, you know, the, he, he's been alleged to be ready to uh, testify before LIBOR. But when I was on with uh, Fabian for Liberty last night on his program, you know, I talked to him uh, and, and I said, I, I'm having a tough time finding, uh, you know, a source that uh, that says that this was a, a bona fide event that was going to happen. I said, in fact, most sources that I see are sourcing the video that you did as uh, as the source. So tell me, uh, you know, wh what do you have on this that that shows that this guy uh, was uh, allegedly going to testify in the LIBOR scandal? And just, you know, he gave me his uh, his sources and he gave me his, uh, uh, you know, he gave me he convinced me uh, pretty much without a doubt, shadow of a doubt that uh, his sources were solid. On the fact that uh, that this guy was uh, uh, Lonza was scheduled to testify before LIBOR. Now, uh, again, you know, we uh, you, we always get in trouble when we just grab information and run with it. And we try, you know, we try. I try especially uh, really hard not to do that. Uh, I was very confident after talking to Fabian for Liberty that uh, that what he was reporting uh, had plenty of validation, other than the one that you put, uh, Gary, the the source that you don't trust. Uh, in the chat room there, you know, he was sourcing uh, individuals that are connected with uh, these with these hearings on LIBOR. So I guess it'll, it'll uh, you know, it'll uh, play out to see if this is 100 percent true or not. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I, I was convinced. Eric, did, have you have you followed up any on uh, on this connection between LIBOR scandal shooting well, in or a shooting are... in as far as I can see, these are the only these are the only three nodes of information that I can prove. I called the uh, you know the actual commerce. If you call most most towns, okay, where a business is or something like that, they have an actual centralized building. Now it is named many different things, but generally it's a commerce department 
okay, that basically gives out information of common wage within the, a certain mile radius and the amount of money being paid on the average and the on the average of whoever's licensed, like a CPA, you know, if a CPA has a license in that area, if he's licensed to operate, if he's presently, if his license is invoked by a specific company, you can find out that that too. So basically what I found out, the only three things that I can prove is yes, that he is an accountant. Yes, he does have some affiliation uh, on record to this LIBOR issue. And yes, I can confirm that he has been subpoenaed. But for what, I can't actually tell you. So it, there's enough circumstantial evidence there to speculate. You know, I'm kind of with Scarecrow on this one. You know, there, there's enough information there. But I haven't seen anyone provide me with a 100% a ironclad, here it is, you know, no questions asked cut and dry, uh, you know, information that, that his father was about to be pulled up under the whole LIBOR deal. However, there is something you can find out that most people aren't talking about. The psychiatrist and the psychiatrist, the attending psychiatrist uh, uh, of the individual and the referring one uh, that they were communicating back and forth is in the same department under the Navy intelligence as the psychiatrist doctor <laughs> to the first kid who killed everybody in the movie theater. In other words, they both work for the same psychiatric association. That, I can tell you, is the truth. So both psychiatrists work for the same psychiatric association and all the other things that I said. So is that, is that enough to guarantee? I don't know, but I, I'm willing to look at the information. Uh, am, am I leaning that way? Yes, I am. I hear no talkie. I see lips moving. Sorry, I, sorry. I had the mic down. I had the mic down <laughs> because I was looking through papers, and Gary gets mad at me when he hears papers on mic, so I, I had the mic off. Um, break that down again because I, I haven't uh, been made aware of the connect the, uh, the the connection between the psychiatrists. Now you, okay. How are they connected again? Make make it make yeah. sense. Okay. If you go back, all right, they have basically doctors. They create associations. Okay where they'll work together within a group. They all agree to network and help each other and work together. They also have a partnership with the Navy, okay, for psychiatric work that the Navy's doing, which is top secret that we can't talk about or know about. I've never read any documents, so I can't tell you what it is that they do. So this, this medical association is basically what it is, like a doctor's association, only it's an association of psychiatrists. Both of these children were under the scrutiny and medical care of this exact same um, uh, psychiatric association, which seems to me, you can't prove it, but it is tied to the Navy and some of the MK Ultra documentation and information uh, is floating around. Th this is the most interesting thing to me because if this is an association <laughs> and they're working together, as an association to diagnose and treat individuals, how do we now have no one asking questions of how this association, through its medical prescriptions, has created two mass murderers? Yeah. Why, why is no one asking that question? That's a serious question, if you ask me. Absolutely. And, and, and the report, it's been reported today uh, that you know, he's on psychotropic drugs. Uh, he is, in fact, if, you go to, if you're at uh, Drudge right now, you know, they're blaming the fear of him being committed uh, caused him to snap. You know, it, it, Gary, I don't know. I, I mean, the, the connections that have been made. Now, I've heard everything that, that from she, she was CIA. The weapons that were uh, were used were CIA issued. I don't know if any of that's true. I've heard a connection to DARPA. Uh, and, yeah, in, in the obviously uh, in uh, in Internet land, you're going to hear anything and everything. Uh, and, uh, you know, but some of the stuff is absolutely provable. Now, it, you know, the coincidence is uh, that the, here, here's a fact. GE, GE Financial Tax Division, right? High, high uppity up uh, uh, CE or uh, executive in that institution that just happens to have, you know, billions of dollars of our future money in their pockets through bailouts. And then we have a guy who's a high up a chief scientist for FICO uh, that we know, guaranteed know for a fact, was uh, going to uh, testify before LIBOR, and it just so happens there are two kids, which are both genius-level kids, air quote, genius-level kids, 
um, who are messed up in the head and pumped up full of uh, psychotropic drugs uh, walk into uh, places that uh, are going to be full of unarmed, defenseless individuals and lay waste. That's a fact. Is it, it, and the odds of uh, uh, you know, the same backgrounds, uh, the same very similar backgrounds on both of these uh, guys, it, it's very, very uh, bizarre to me. It's a nation of 310 million people. You know, where the poor people, uh, you know, wh- where's the lower class uh, mass murderers, right? I mean, how can it seems to be always geared towards uh, these uh, financial elite because that's what these individuals are. And their kids messed up on uh, some kind of a psychiatric, psychiatric program coming out and being the, uh, you know, these butchers. Well, yeah, and here's some things that are funny, you know, okay, you look at, let's, let's look at the government statistics. 62% of police officers, okay, are under psychiatric review for some type of stress or anger management because of their job. 84% of police officers are borderline or are alcoholics and so on and so forth. Let me ask you a question. How come some police officer has just freaked out and shot up everybody in the office around him? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean here's the realization. Take us out, Eric. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back after these messages for the final segment All right here on the one and only Wide Awake News. Man, uh, all right, we'll continue. All right, we're here with uh, Eric Lovely, of course. Uh, Gary is weighing in during the breaks. Gary, feel free to jump in if you want to. Uh, and, and we're talking about the lunacy of uh, of gun control. And, and you know, I don't know how much more we need to whip up uh, on this uh, uh, yeah. this dead this dead horse. But it, it, as far as I'm concerned, you know, look. I, as far as I'm concerned, this whole event we we could talk about gun control and how absolutely ridiculous the notion that if we just write a piece on a piece of paper uh, that uh, we uh, can't uh, we can't have guns in this country, then we're all of a sudden not going to have uh, these kind mm. of events in China last year. A crazy man walked into a school, and and Eric was talking about a machete. A crazy man walked into a school and stabbed 22 kids uh, in China. Now, China was first and foremost uh, one of the nations of the world to urge the people of this country and urge the political leaders of this country to take action now in enforcing stricter gun control after on the heels of this uh, 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 Connecticut shooting. So, you know, we're going to take our lead from China now. We're going to take our lead from the the uh, the people that have an agenda to disarm the nation and that Eric in the last segment with you that's where I want to take this uh, the rest of this conversation. This event happened, and regardless if if it was uh, you know as the mainstream, well forget that it isn't as the mainstream has presented it to us because we see the uh, the uh, attack now on the last vestiges of the Constitution, the last piece of freedom that we have in this country, the last ability we have to ensure our common law rights uh, is going to be under assault now uh, with with this crisis event of, uh, of what happened in Connecticut as the backdrop. Why now? Why now? I mean, I, I've been trying to think about this for the last several days. You know, is it is it the end of the line where we've pretended everything's OK? We've stole from the future. We've indebted the world to the point that it has to end in a very, very ugly, violent, totalitarian way, uh, including possibly World War III. Are we at the final point where, you know, the the agencies of this nation have stocked up on millions and billions of rounds of ammunition? We've got the blue uniforms everywhere. We've got uh, the security state in place, drones flying around, traffic cams everywhere, more alphabet agencies that are looking into your computer, uh, fusion centers. Is it time now? for the agenda, for the powers that be to implement this agenda of disarming as much as possible so they can put down the strong boot of tyranny. Well, Eric Lovely. I, 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 yeah, yes, you know, no, some in the middle. Uh, they see, here's the really big thing. The, the people just, they never want to grasp it or they don't want to understand that they don't want to actually digest it. And then, because all they hear is the hate, you know, they 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 see hate for what they're hearing, and that's what they hear. That's why people think that I I spew hate and things of that nature. It's because they hate the honesty and the raw, naked truth of what it is. It hurts. It burns them. That's why they lash out at me. Because when you're in pain, one of the first things is fight or flight. You want to lash out or you want to run. We can't run from emotional pain, so you lash out. This is the reason why people treat me like this. And, and you know, the, the reason why it is now is because you're coming to the, the, the apex, the crescendo moment. 
you know, where this all comes, you know, dis discombobulated, disjointed, falls apart. You have the guy from Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which I do not agree with. I think he's, he's a complete chump, but he, he knows that it's coming. He's telling everybody he's preparing for it. He's buying acres in, in Texas and so forth. And <clears throat> he's talking about, you know, people killing each other over food and, and, and being prepared and, and how to capitalize in the new economy. But, you know, this is the reality of what is coming down the pike. Because you have – okay, let's answer the question the absolute easiest. And I know I've been rambling, but here you go. A degenerate, so a degenerate society produces degenerate candidates, produces degenerate leaders, produces degenerate organizations, which produces ge degenerate leadership or government, and a degener and the only real version of degenerate government is totalitarian rule. I mean, th th this is how it is. Okay, and, it, it, and these people think about how it happened to us, and I'm sorry to tell them, look, all the sitting around and all, all the playing these games and all the waiting and, you know, telling people, oh, well, we're going to fix it tomorrow, just paint more signs. No, don't listen to that crazy man over there that tells you to take a stand and put your boot in their ass. Don't listen to that guy. Let's sit around and wait and do this and that and other. Look, you're done. Okay, you're done. You're society. If you want to change society... If you want to change leadership, if you want to change a type of government, then change your communities, change yourselves, change your money. And when someone comes and says, hey, you can't use that money, you say, well, we want to use this money. We're going to use this money. And if you have a problem with it, we're going to hang you from that street lamp right over there. Oh, you have to use a bank. No, we don't want to use your bank. We don't care about your bank. And if you continue with your bank nonsense, we're going to hang you from that street post right over there. That's how it goes. That's the Constitution. And if you aren't ready to really embrace that, then you really have no idea what the common law is all about. Because it was about there is a time and period when arguing and letting them push you around is done. And there's time to do something about it. Well, you know, you guys want to wait. Out there, you want to you want to you want to see the the smoking gun and the blood. Well, how's twenty children for you? Oh, I guess the kids at Waco didn't matter either. I guess the people at Ruby Ridge didn't matter either. So that really doesn't matter to the listening public, to to the American citizen who's standing around going, "What are we gonna do?" While all of these people are dying, they're foreclosing on homes. You look at the unemployment rate, the homeless rate. Look at everything that's just going on around you, okay? The government is squeezing the life out of you, and it doesn't care what happens to you. So why, why for the life of me, is anyone still given two plug nickels, or should we say two wooden nickels, what the government has to say about anything? I mean, anything at all. They've been proven to be wrong about everything. They can't even add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Look at the freaking inflation rate. I mean, oh, we're just not going to count those. You know, uh, gasoline, what's that? Food? Nah, you don't need that stuff. I, I mean, this, this, is, this is the realization. Your complete and total society, whether you feel you are or not, whether you feel your family is or not, your society as an entity is completely degenerate. Completely degenerate. Whether you like that or not, that's the reality. And until you simply step back and completely change the way society is, it is going to continue to get even more degenerate. And eventually, the degenerate monster is going to start eating people. As in culling the population, genocide, religious war. I mean, come on. This is ridiculous we're even having this conversation. Well, it's a you know it's going to be in the it's going to be what we talk about. I, I believe Eric for the you know it, till the next uh, come together meeting in uh, in D.C. where they're announcing you know this new plan this new plan to get uh, gun violence under control. And we we talked a little bit about it uh, last night and a little bit about it at the beginning of the program. Uh, the distraction you know horrible event kids dead but this you know. The world that has been brought to you by corruption, by collusion, by uh, special interest uh, owning uh, our government has led to these massacres happening, uh, uh, probably the, uh, uh, scores of these massacres happening every single day around this planet in our name. And, you know, we, we in alternative media have been talking for some time about this is all going to come home. This is all coming back here. 
everything we see going on around the world, everything that, you know, that we pretend can never happen in this country, uh, especially the people that think that we don't need a way to defend ourselves in this country because it can never happen here. Uh, you know, it, well, it is all coming here, Eric. Well, here, here you go, Charlie. And, here and, and we go. Here, here, here's an interesting quote for you. If you will not defend yourself, then you are guilty and should deserve all the befile and malicious activities that a criminal can cast upon your body, persons, and possessions. After that was said, a second man stood up and screamed, Hear, hear, and then a standing ovation was led by a third man. The man who said it was Thomas Jefferson. The man who screamed, hear, hear, was John Adams. The man who led the standing ovation was George Washington. All three of those men believed that if you did not take you and your family's safety in your own personal hands, that you were guilty and deserved everything you got. So if you want to call me disgusting, if you don't like my mental attitude, then you don't, you don't agree with the forefathers. You have no concept of who they are. You have no idea of what they put on paper or what they spoke. You ha I mean, this is, this is the reality, you know. The, these are three of the key figures that, that created this entire nation clearly telling you that you deserved it if you didn't do something yourself to prevent it. So, you know, I agree with them. I, I, I truly, truly agree with them. I, I have much sorrow for these children. I feel so bad that these children are being used as as political toys. Even the children that lived, they're going to be scarred, seeing their friends' dead, horrible bodies. And, and you know, these children are, are, are going to be the next generation indoctrinated in the system and pumped full of these friggin' drugs because of the situation that they had to live through. You know what I mean? And they're going to be scarred. It's 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 the whole entire thing. Definitely, I want to say that everyone should 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 do whatever you do: pray, sing kumbaya, light candles, whatever it is for the children, for the children and their little friends, the little friends that didn't die that day, the little guys and girls who have to remember what little Bobby looked like when he was playing jacks, that has to remember what little Susie and little Laura looked like while they were playing hopscotch. You should definitely feel sorry for those individuals. But I find it difficult to to feel sorry for someone who had the ability, who had the mental wherewithal, not be, it, it, to to not have this situation happen in the first place, and for someone to say, well, that they didn't, well, they did, they ignored it, they assumed, they assumed that the teachers could protect them, they assumed that the government was going to take care of it, they assumed that the police officers, they assumed that something like that would never happen in their town. Well, an old Marine, Marine Corps sergeant once told me that assumption, it's the mother of all screw-ups. <laughs> I was wondering how you are going to finish that. Is that, what you, is that what they said in the Navy when you were in there? No, no, I, I, I said screw-up. I, I didn't say anything bad. <laughs> yeah, Eric, you know, it's a terrible... Birds, it, yeah, Eric, it's, it's, a, it's a topic that I know we're going to be talking about again, and we're going to be, it's going to be in our face uh, going forward. Just, we'll talk more Thursday. I want to, I want to uh, pick your brain uh, on some upcoming events, uh, and, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll... You mean like us sending troops to Bulgaria? Yes, that's one of them. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that and the, what 2013 looks like uh, when we get you back here on Thursday. Eric Lovler will be back joining me uh, Thursday night, 5 o'clock west, 8 o'clock east. Stay tuned, guys. Uh, we're, go ahead. End of the world eve on Thursday. Don't, don't miss the show. <laughs> we're going to be back in just a few minutes with Woody O'Brien, guys. Hang tight. We'll see you in a few. I think that's what you should call Thursday. Your end, end of the world, of the world Thursday. Eve broadcast. End, end, see, Party end like there's no tomorrow. E-O-W-E. E